Greetings everyone and welcome to this absolute basic beginners course in Blender. During this course we're going to be having a look at structuring and shaping models using textures and shaders on those models, animation techniques, various modifiers, various add-ons, you name it, we'll cover it. But what is Blender and how do we get it? The most important thing to know about Blender, and this is huge, is that Blender is absolutely free. This is open source software, which means you never have to buy it or pay a subscription. Not only that, but the backup you receive from Blender is fantastic. And online, you can find thousands of tutorials, which will help you to learn and master the program. Head on over to blender.org, which will show you all the features available. Then, Check out your system requirements to make sure that your computer can handle this software. Once that's done, find your operating system and download the installer as prompted. Then you just follow the usual procedures to install the program onto your computer and get ready to start designing. So with that done, let's jump in and check out Blender. So now that we've downloaded and installed Blender, let's have a look at what it looks like when we open it up. Every time we open up Blender, we're going to get a default scene, which looks a bit like this. Well, exactly like this. So we have a scene which is hidden by this splash screen over here. On the splash screen, we have options of choosing either one of our recent files or projects or choosing an option for a new project. If we want to use an old file, just find it over here. Otherwise, click anywhere away from the splash screen and it will disappear. This is our default scene. In the default scene, we have a cube, we have some lighting, and we have a camera. We can change the style of how we want to view the scene. So if we come up here to the top right, at the moment we are on solid view and this is the default view. Here we can see just the shape, there's no lighting, there's no colors. To the left of solid we can choose wireframe, now we can start seeing through items. To the right of solid is the material view, so if we had colors we would start to see colors now, but still no lighting, still no shading. And the last option is the rendered option and this allows to start seeing shading and lighting in our scene. To the right up here we have our scene selection. So everything that's in our scene will be listed over here and in alphabetical order. Cube at the moment is highlighted because cube is what we've selected. If we select the camera that will change highlight camera and the same applies to the light. Down to the right we have options and tools that we can use to change and work on our project or scene or each individual object and change its properties. The second one from the top looks like a camera from behind, click on that and to the right of that we see we have a render engine. We have three options as the render engine, the EV, workbench and cycles. We're going to be using the render engine EV and we'll keep it like that for the duration of our tutorials. To see the difference, let's go check it out. Here we have two images that have been rendered in Blender, one through Cycles and one through Eevee. You can see the difference in the quality of the image in Cycles, where there's a lot more richness, superior lighting and shading than what we find in the Eevee version. The difference is this, to render the above image in cycles took us 1 minute and 30 seconds, whereas in Eevee this took half a second. If we make a simple animation of just over 3 seconds long, or in this case 52 frames, each frame has to be rendered individually. To render this entire video sequence in cycles would have taken 78 minutes, as opposed to EV, where the total process would have been 26 seconds. If you have a laptop or computer that can handle cycles, for sure go for it, otherwise EV is the best option 
in terms of speed and time. When we work in Blender, we have to learn how to use keyboard shortcuts. So instead of looking for various options up here and up here, which takes time, we just use shortcuts on our keyboard, which will perform certain actions. The first ones we can learn is our number keypad, and this will change how we view the scene. If I press zero, we go into a camera view. One is a front view. Three is a side view. Seven is a top view. And zero takes us back to the camera. If I choose one and want to see the other side of this cube, I press nine. Three takes me to the side. Nine takes me to the opposite side. Seven takes me to the top. And nine takes me to the bottom. Again, zero takes us back to the camera. We use our mouse wheel to zoom in or zoom out of our scene. Please note the zoom occurs where the mouse pointer is situated. So if I keep the mouse pointer up here and then wheel in, we're not zooming towards the cube anymore. The same applies when I zoom out. So if I want to zoom in on the cube, the pointer has to be above the cube. If this is not an option, go to Edit, Preferences, Navigation, and check this box that says Zoom to Mouse Position. To rotate around the scene, hold the mouse wheel down and move the mouse around, and this gives you the option to move around and to view the scene keeping our cube in the center. If the cube is not in the center, again go to Edit, Preferences, Navigation, and check this box here that says Orbit Around Selection. Blender is software for creating 3D visuals. 3D means we're working on three dimensions. These three dimensions are represented as axis in Blender. So three dimensions, three axes. We have this red line here, which represents our x-axis, the green line here, which represents the y-axis, and the blue line, which is our z-axis, or up and down axis. The three most used actions in Blender are to move an object, scale an object, or rotate an object. And for this we need, again, some keyboard shortcuts. To move an object, we use the shortcut G, or grab. If we want to move our cube and our cube is selected, we press G and watch how the mouse pointer changes icon. Now we've told Blender that we want to move the cube, but Blender is waiting for us to tell us where it must go. So if I start moving the mouse around, the cube moves around. To abort this operation, I just press the right mouse key and the object goes back to its original starting point. Again, G says we want to move it, we can then move it, and if I want to select this as the new area, I will press the left mouse button. Now, of course, to go back, we just need to do an undo or control Z. If I can move the object, I can also scale it. To scale it, we're using the shortcut S. Watch again the mouse pointer. As I press S, that will change. We've told Blender we want to scale the object. Blender's waiting to see by how much. As we move the mouse, we can scale the cube. To cancel the operation, right-click the mouse key and it goes back to its original scale. S for scale. And confirm by pressing the left mouse key. To go back, Control Z or Undo. The last action is Rotate, and for that we use the shortcut R. Again, watch the mouse pointer. As I press, it changes. We've told Blender we want to rotate. Blender is waiting for us to see how much. To cancel the operation, right click. Now with these actions, we can even get more specific so that Blender knows exactly what we want to do. So back to our move tool, or G. If I press G, Blender says, yes, you want to move it. Where do you want to move it? So let's move this on the x-axis only. So we press G to move it. 
Second shortcut will be X, which says we're moving it on the X axis. Now I move the mouse and it's going to move on the X axis only. To return it, right click, G, X, to accept the new position, left click, G, Y, GZ. We can do the same with scale. So the shortcut for scale is S, then X. Now we're scaling on the X axis only. SY, XZ. And the same applies to rotate, which is shortcut R, X. R, Y, R, Z. So let's go have a look at our options over here and look for our object properties box. And that's going to be this orange block over here. It says object properties. If I click on that, it's going to give me values of what we were just dealing with. So location, which is move or G, rotation, which is R, and scale, which is S. Right now our cube is our default cube has not been changed, so our location has not changed, rotation has not changed, and neither has the scale. If we move along the x-axis, so G, X, and confirm that as the new position, you can see that our position on the x-axis has changed. It's now minus 2.7581. If I want to make that a whole number, I can just click in here and make that minus 2. And the cube will be on its new position. Anything up here on this side of the y-axis will be a negative number. Anything on this side of the y-axis will be a positive number. So if I want to move the Q on this side but in the same position, I can change that minus 2 to a positive 2 and the Q will move there. If I want it back to its original position, press 0. The next shortcut that we look at is going to be how to duplicate this cube. Duplicate starts with D, and we're going to use the shortcut Shift D. As soon as I press Shift D, Blender has made a duplicate, and you can see the mouse pointer has changed. So Blender says, Yes, I made the duplicate. What do you want to do now? As I move the mouse, I have the option now of moving our duplicated cube. If I want to get rid of that cube, I press X. Blender says, do you want to delete it? And you say yes by entering. Let's select our cube again. And we're going to duplicate it. So Shift D. Now Blender says, I've made the copy. Where do you want it? Let's say we want to move it. So G. Where do we want to move it? Let's move it on the x-axis. So x. And use our left mouse button to secure the new position. Now we have a duplicate Q. It's just at a different spot. And minus 5.2514. Let's change that to minus 5 to make it a whole number. How do we delete this Q? We press x and enter to confirm the action. Select our cube. Now we know that we want to move it by 5 up here, which is a negative number. So the shortcuts are going to be as follows. Shift D to duplicate. Then what do we want to do? We want to move it. So G. On which axis do we want to move it? X. So X. And how much? Minus 5. And enter. Alright, so let's take it a step further. and Let's duplicate our new cube but with a rotation. So to duplicate, first we have to make sure that we have selected the second cube. To duplicate, press Shift D. What do we want to do with it? We want to rotate it, so R. Do we want to rotate it on a specific axis? Yes, let's say Y. Do we know how many degrees? Let's say 45. So using the number keypad, 45, and enter to confirm. Our new duplicated cube is highlighted, so let's make a duplicate of that and put it on the x-axis over here. 
with the same but positive value the distance that this one is. Now we know that was minus 5, so if we have 5 to 0 plus another 5 from 0 to 5, we have to move it by 10. First let's duplicate it, so shift D. What do we want to do? We want to move it, which is G. We want to move it on a specific axis, which is X, and then 10 on the number keypad, and enter. We now have four cubes in our scene. Two over here, one in the middle, and one down here on the x-axis. You'll see in our scene that we now have one, two, three, four cubes listed, and they listed as cube, and then 001, 002, 003. If we want to name them, we want to name them alphabetically so that these objects stay in the scene together. So we change this one from cube to cube center. Change this one to cube right. Cube left. And cube rotated. Now, because we've used the word cube as the first part of the name, they all stay together. If we have changed this to center, then left, right, Now it's moved itself around alphabetically, and when we have about 20 objects in here, it's going to be very difficult to find something. So rather have them all named cube, followed by a description after the name. All right, so that was pretty simple and a whole lot of fun. Uh, go do yourself a favor, get out there and use the program and practice these tools and actions so that you're nice and familiar with it for the next episode. Don't try to rush this. Once you're comfortable with certain actions, the next step is going to be a whole lot easier. Thanks for watching and see you soon.